how we should interpret this in critique of ideology, this, how should I call it, reference to the obscenity of the sounds themselves, the obscene materiality of language, voice, of symbolic texture. Uh, maybe you know the story, but I, I'd like to repeat it. Something happened, some, you know, I come from Slovenia, which is south of Austria. In south of Austria, bordering Slovenia, there is a province called Kärnten, Carinthia. They had the glorious leader, <laughs> uh, 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 Jörg Haider, you know, the well-known proto-fascist populist. His card, which he played again and again in politics, was that, which is totally ridiculous, that we Slovenes pose a threat to Carinthia that we want to occupy it. So, his big political motto was, Kärnten bleibt Deutsch. Carinthia will or should remain German. How did some friends of mine, not of mine, but I met them later, uh, leftists counterattack? Not as you would have expected with a complex interpretation. They didn't point out how he evokes, I don't, you know, all this usual boring Marxist stuff. He evokes imaginary fears to, and so on, no, uh, to cover up some contradictions, whatever. No, they did something extremely simple and efficient to render Haider disgusting. They bought space, half a page in daily newspapers, and they just started, I mean, printed first this well-known phrase, Carinthia must remain or will remain German, Kärnten bleibt Deutsch, and then they just supplemented it with a series of totally meaningless obscene variation. The whole ad read like this, Kärnten bleibt Deutsch, Kärnten bleibt Deutsch, Kärnten bleibt Deutsch, and so on. So, all of a sudden, it was just kind of an effect of disgusting obscenity. This is also one of the mechanisms that we shouldn't underestimate. For example, when you, you make, do you know the German, whatever you call it, industrial, hard rock, punk band, Rammstein? Yes. I like them. I think they're very good in... I think they're basically doing the same. I think that uh, when they... You know some people, liberals who worry... Uh, are, have this divided attitude towards them. They say, yes, we know that they are ironic towards... You, because, you know, their spectacle is a kind of a imitation of these hard totalitarian rituals, all that stuff. The usual story is, yes, they, we know it's ironic undermining, but what if there are some young people who will too directly identify with this and effectively become neo-Nazi and so on and so on? But I claim this totally misreads what they are effectively doing. They are not simply repeating the Nazi strategy. They are reducing it to this kind of signifying nonsense. They are doing to the Nazi formulas, they are doing this obscene, Kärnten, Deib, Bleuch, Bleib, Bleuch, or whatever, so that simply by suspending sense, you become aware of the materiality, signifying materiality in all its obscenity, as it were. I think it is very effective, much more maybe than direct critique of ideology. So again, I totally reject those who see this danger of, oh, if you imitate totalitarian rituals, you play with fire. It all depends on on how you imitate them. They are basically, I claim, doing the same, as we already mentioned this, basically doing the same as what, uh, as what Chaplin is doing with his great dictator. Now, when the Kinkel Figler has this uh, incomprehensible, disgusting language, which is German, but not German, and so on and so 